38 matches, 26 wins, 12 draws, no defeats. Arsene Wenger's football dream team remained undefeated as they stormed to the Premier League title, becoming the first team since Preston in 1889 to remain unbeaten for a whole season in one of the world's toughest leagues. Arsene Wenger had arrived at Arsenal via Japan, a virtual unknown, greeted by headlines asking, Arsene who? I think that the English football is going up and that the Premier League is uh, one of the most important leagues in the world now. So I think it also that uh, it was a challenge for me to be maybe the first foreign manager sure the first French manager to go there and to try to be successful. When he first came into the club, you know, no one really knew who he was. Um, David Dean was uh, the man who brought him in from Grand Passe and uh, he sat us down and said, this, this manager will take the club forward. And it was going a little bit backwards, there's no doubt in that, so we needed a change of philosophy if you like. Uh, and from day one, he was fantastic, Arsene Wenger. That's what, that's what he brought along, uh, Arsene, because you know, some of the philosophy, philo philosophy came from you know, Japan and how he's, how he's been brought up as well. So he kind of brought all these kind of um, experiences from where he's been managing uh, to Arsenal, and it was great. And even the, you know, the uh, centre was a little bit kind of Japanese style. So he, he brought a whole, whole new kind of mentality to Arsenal, which, um, you know, Arsenal benefited, you know, tenfold really. The Alsace-born manager impressed almost as soon as he took over in 1996, producing teams that had a distinctive impact on English football. His emphasis on sports science and his brand of possession football won many converts. Wenger's Arsenal became synonymous with flair, pace and power qualities that carried them to two league championships and three FA Cups in the first seven years of his reign. By 2003, Wenger had assembled a squad that was the envy of most of Europe. Dennis Bergkamp, unloved at Inter Milan, had been given license to be creative by Wenger. Midfielder Patrick Vieira had also swapped San Siro for Highbury and flourished. His blending of skill, physical authority and sometimes snarling competitiveness earned him the Arsenal captaincy. Thierry Henry had been played out of position at Juventus. Under Wenger, he became a frightening weapon. I went to watch him in a, in a playoff game against Udinese for qualifiers for the UEFA Cup and he played left uh, left wing back, yes, and uh, after the game uh, I uh, came back uh, to Paris with him and I told him, look, I will take you and you will play striker and uh, that's why he came here in fact, but I knew him already from uh, the youth teams and I think he trusted me because uh, he knew me from Monaco. He was a big lad, six foot two, um, you know, he had so much pace, um, you know, once he got into his stride, he, 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 a lot, he went out to the left-hand side a lot and picked the ball up and then he'd run the full-back quite often. Uh, but once he got in his stride, he was so hard, but on the ball as well, you know, you look about players who, who might have a bit of pace, but they, control-wise they're not the best, but he had everything. He had, you know, on the, on, on the ball as well, he had skill, trickery, he could go past the player, and he had an eye for goal. We could tell that, you know, straight away. The 2002-03 season had seen the club overhauled in the league by Manchester United. The FA Cup was some consolation. I uh, reflected over the summer and I felt last year, I thought we were a little bit complacent when it was going well in, uh, during the autumn 2002 and winter 2003. And I felt that uh, the disappointment we got uh, will get us the hunger 
to bounce back and uh, because I thought the quality was there. 2003, I think we'd lost out on the league. And I think it was presented to us that, you know, maybe we were second best and, and nobody in that group felt they were second best. And I think that was just enough to challenge us to to find even more. You, you set out to win. And that was, that was a great thing about Arsenal. You set out to win the Premiership. You don't think we're coming second. You set out to win. Everyone is mentally tuned in to win the Premiership. And that was that is the greatest feeling anyone can have in football. You've got a team, we are going to win. Another proven winner was German international Jens Lehmann, acquired from Borussia Dortmund to replace David Seaman in goal. Jens was a very important player because after losing David Seaman, it's all so important to get a good goalkeeper come in because they can save you 10, 12 points a season. And uh, lucky enough, Jens Lehmann was available and uh, Arsene Wenger made a great signing there. He impressed me from, from day one, his professionalism and his focus. Great guy, fantastic winner, um, it's not a problem, slotted in brilliantly well. Um, you know, we were sorry to see Dave go, but Jens came in, maybe gave us something different with crosses, came and collected things, took the problem away from us. Arsenal's a fantastic club, one of the biggest of the world, and uh, it's always a challenge to go to such a club, but, and um, it's a bit um, like an honour being asked from such a big club to play for them. I think he's, again, he's done a great job. He's kept us in some uh, tough games and, and, he, and he looks the part, to be fair. The season started at home against Everton. Goals by Henri and Pires shaped a 2-1 win. Then at Middlesbrough, Pires turned provider to set up Gilberto. Aston Villa and Manchester City were also overcome as Arsenal took four wins from their first four games. And while the attackers grabbed the headlines, a new centre-back pairing also gained plaudits. When you look at the record of Sol Campbell since he has arrived here, it's absolutely tremendous. This guy has won two championships and two FA Cups and uh, he's here just for three years. It was a dream. <laughs> it was a it was a dream, you know, because for me, I you know, I always wait for for a situation like that where you could kind of run. I control my area and I've got guys who can control their area and it's fantastic. It's a dream. I don't, I don't want this to end. So uh, knows how to organize uh, the chain and um, he gives good commands and uh, even for me he's very helpful. Well, Sol was a great signing. I mean, um, a lot of eyebrows were raised when he signed because I think he shocked a lot of our players as well because, um, you know, coming across North London, it was a brave decision to make because they're big rivals, obviously Spurs, and, um, you know, he made that decision though. Uh, I, I really thought he might go to Barcelona or somewhere like that who, who was chasing him as well. But he, he made, he said to Arsene Wenger, look, he's, he wants to come to Arsenal. Um, and, you know, it was a good decision for him in the end. He won trophies, involved in that unbeaten season. But they were fantastic. Colo Torre and Sol Campbell at the back. I always felt Colo Torre was going to be a, a top player because he had such a, he was so tenacious and, and such a winner. You know, his, his pace and the, the way that he grew as an individual. And he's gone on to have a, an outstanding career. You could see it there. It, was, it, it wasn't rocket science picking him out. It was just finding a position for him and centre half became his best position. You're just in tune. You're in tune, you're working hard. Um, everybody's at the top of their game. Um, nobody wants to let down the team. You know, everybody hurts if, if, uh, if the team loses, and really hurts. And, and, uh, and that kind of um, puts responsibility on your shoulders. At fullback were two more internationals, Cameroonian Lauren and Ashley Cole, who had graduated stylishly from the youth team. It's been a dream. It's quite unbelievable when I, when I look at the stars I'm playing with. I never thought I'd get a chance here, but to be alongside them, let alone play with them and see them every day is... Uh, as I said, a kid's dream, and I'm, I'm really enjoying it. Ashley Cole, we, we know how good he is at left back, and I think Lauren was at right back, so Lauren was a real top quality player as well. Um, so it's one of them, we, we always have to have a good basis of, of a back four. If you're going to have any chance of winning anything, you always got to have a decent defence. And, you know, after having Lee Dixon and Tony Adams and Mike Keown and Steve Bold, 
Nigel Winterburn and David Seaman, it was always going to be hard to get that right defence for, for Arsene Wenger. But he managed to find the players who, who you know, gelled straight away and, and knew exactly what, what they had to do. After a 1-1 draw at Portsmouth, Arsenal faced possibly their toughest match of this or any other season, away to the champions. We always knew when you went to Old Trafford that you needed to get some sort of a result. If you could win there, and very often it meant winning the Premiership. If you, if you could draw, then it was something to build on. If they won it, then often they would gain a momentum. It was always very important. Um, we always looked at the Manchester United game as, as pinnacle to if we were going to win the league or not. Getting a draw, a draw there was important. Of course, the game completely kicked off. We lost our captain. Uh, involved in a, in a tussle with, with Van Nistelrooy. Van Nistelrooy's got a chance of just, you know, win the game, hits the bar, you know, in the famous Martin Keown game, chop on his, uh, on his shoulders and say, have some of that. Uh, of course, if he scores that penalty, then we wouldn't have gone unbeaten and uh, the story would never be told. On 26 September, Newcastle came to Highbury. Thierry Henry scored twice as the team shared five goals. The Frenchman was typically cool as he converted the decisive penalty. October brought two massive challenges. First came a trip to Anfield, where it was again a Frenchman who dominated the headlines. Robert Perez's goal was worthy of settling any game. Then there was a visit from London rivals Chelsea. Buoyed by Roman Abramovich's millions, they matched the Gunners. Until luck helped Arsene Wenger's team. They really expected to beat us at Highbury, and uh, they really fancied themselves on the day, and uh, hopefully we brought them down a little bit. Pundits and players alike began to realise Wenger had created something special. How he put that team together um, was was amazing. He inherited some of the players, obviously uh, getting there, but the ones he brought in, he kind of knew knew them, and um, and that, that helps have an inside track and uh, and with with the mentality and uh, and obviously you know you've got the skill, you've got the kind of playing ability, but I think he does look on the mentality side, and so he, that was a big thing for him. Vieira coming in almost off the street at the beginning, um, you know, a great lad to work with. Had to have the ball. If you didn't give him, give him the ball, you got a rollicking. So everything went through, through him, and then he gave it to Dennis, and and Dennis would then give it to Henri, and the ball was in the back of the net. It really was that kind of simple, and the rest of us were the sort of framework in and around that, supplying these guys, giving the ball to our best players, and boy, did we have some players. With Leeds hit for four, Spurs were up next, and again Arsenal battled from behind and eclipsed their greatest rivals. Arsenal's attacking force combined flair from the flanks, a predator up front, and the cerebral, graceful Dennis Bergkamp. Football is a is a little bit uh, at the end in the final third. You need like one guy who gives a great ball and one guy who finishes. He was the kind of quarterback uh, of the team, you know, the guy who always gives the ball in the right space at the right moment and uh, the brain of a team. I think Dennis was ahead of us, you know, uh, with everything he did in his life and the way that he played his football. It must have been a joy for Wenger to have somebody of that quality because that was what we were going to aspire to. It wasn't what we started with. And Dennis just slotted in. He struck you uh, when you saw him play straight away. There's something special with this guy. And uh, even today, well, all the former players who played with him said, uh, he is the player, you know, the player that remains in your brain, that the player remains in your head because he had something special. Always make the right decision. When you're going forward, three decisions, what one do I make? Do I go A, B or C? He would always make the right decision. He had uh, a flexibility, almost like a ballet dancer, the way that he could go off from, from foot to foot. You know, he was, his balance was, was, was amazing. And he had a simplicity of movement as well. If he wanted to receive the ball behind, he just a small movement towards the ball and he was away. And Dennis Burkamp would read your mind as well. 
and so he can only pass it in there. I'm going to have to drop off my defender and make sure I'm there for the ball. And so he had such a great understanding, not just for himself, but for the other players around him. As 2003 drew to a close, formidable statistics accumulated without the blemish of a defeat. Henri appeared to be playing a different game as he bewitched the Wolves' defence before an away win at Southampton clinched by his countrymen. As it goes on, you go on and you're winning games, you're not losing. You didn't really think about being going the whole season uh, unbeaten. That didn't, really, that didn't come into our minds. We just wanted to win. We have a fantastic atmosphere in the dressing room. Everybody's friends, you know, everybody supports each other. It doesn't matter if some, some, some players are on the bench or, or some players is, is playing. Uh, everybody's supporting each other, you know. That's why this makes the, the team really strong. Could literally have gone to war with that group of players. It could play pretty football, it could battle, it could fight, it could churn out any kind of result. We all were at the top of our game, but we all spent, you know, another 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes after training practicing free kicks or shots or whatever, little kind of things in our game we need to kind of, yeah, it's going fine, but we just don't, don't kind of uh, lose sight and just kind of tick over and make sure everything's, everything's OK. So we never dropped off. A new year brought more of the same from Arsenal. Pires and Henri tortured the Borough defence on the 10th of January to launch a nine-match winning streak. Thierry Henry scored nine times in those nine games. Better strikes than this are rarely seen in any season. We knew, even when we were 1-0 down, Thierry Henry had not scored yet, but that will happen at some stage. So it is a, like a, a boost of the confidence of the team. Was one at some stage we were even two nil down. Everybody looked at him, but well, what are you waiting for? <laughs> you know, <laughs> we expect you to do something now about it, and that's what happened most of the time. Against Southampton at Highbury, Henri reached a notable milestone, scoring his hundredth Premier League goal, and soon his hundred and first. We knew we had players who can ch change the game very quickly. Um, so we never give up. We kept playing uh, and hoping that chance will come along. And uh, very often it did. And, uh, you know, we took the chances. But, yeah, that was always important. You know, if you go goal down, character, showing character to get back into the game. Uh, but we had loads of that. We had loads of character in that dressing room. They showed this at Chelsea, falling behind after 27 seconds, but fighting back to take all three points. The good results continued, as did Henri's personal goal of the season competition, including this contender against Blackburn. Three successive home games followed, the first against Bolton, and for once Henri was denied. But Arsenal's goal was worth waiting for. Pires finishing off a superb move. With this result, the Gunners had gone 29 league matches unbeaten since the start of the season, equaling the feats of Leeds in the 70s and Liverpool in the 80s. There were so many options in the final third, and you know there was an urgency and a desire to win games and, and win them early. Um, and any Arsenal fan that sat in his chair in those days at Highbury, he knew he came to watch some, you know, some serious stuff. Highbury was a great stadium. I mean, just walking out there before the game, you was in the tunnel, you were shoulder to shoulder with the other team. And they would look across and say, God, oh, blimey, they've got Dennis Burke, Cameron Thierry Henry, we're going to have a real one. We really looked like we was up for it as well a lot, a lot of the time in that tunnel. So a lot of games maybe have won in the tunnel. Games against Manchester United would have to be won on the pitch. And recent encounters between the two had been fiery. Thierry Henry again provided the spark in this match. Louis Saha's late equaliser prevented victory, but the result meant the Gunners equaled Burnley's record of unbeaten games in a season, 
set in 1921. Liverpool were next to visit Highbury. Thierry Henry tore them apart with his first hat-trick of the season. The Frenchman warmed fans' hearts after Arsenal had been knocked out of the Champions League by Chelsea a few days earlier. Just picked the ball up almost halfway line and just done an absolutely amazing run. He got up to Carragher and kind of did him a couple of times in the box and slotted it home. And I think that season, you know, he was coming to a time when he's so mature as a player. He's learned all the way through his career. Um, you know, from '99 when he first signed for Arsenal, he had five years now. And now he's confident about his own ability, and uh, he knew he could score every week. A week later, Henri scored four as Arsenal demolished Leeds in one of the most comprehensive team performances ever seen in English football. It left them ten points clear with five games remaining. He had a spell where he was unplayable because even uh, in the training sessions it was embarrassing for the defenders. He just scored when he wanted. And I told him sometimes so don't provoke too much with defenders because these are proud boys and uh, they get quite angry if you just uh, score every time. So we had the spell, it was just unstoppable. Whatever I was trying that day was, was coming off, so it's one of those nights. You don't want the ref to do the whistle. You know, you, you want to play that game all your life. You know, you, it was a special, special night, yeah. On April 25th, Chelsea's defeat at Newcastle ensured that in the North London derby, Arsenal needed only a draw to guarantee the club's 13th league title. Things went to plan as they gained a 2-0 lead after 35 minutes. Vieira put them ahead. And then Robert Pires exemplified the standards of Arsenal's season with a goal worthy of champions. Spurs scored two late goals to share the points, but they couldn't spoil Arsenal's title party. At the very, very, very beginning, we had some warning to not to see uh, celebrate over there. But then when I saw them, when they scored, they came back 2-2. And I saw them, it seemed like they won the World Cup final. And I think they didn't realise that we were actually winning the title at their ground. They scored last minute to make it 2-2. Um, and it was celebration time, really. I mean, we, we was over the moon. It was a great season. And to top it all off, winning at Wild Wy Type Lane was great for the fans. I mean, you know, uh, I remember them staying behind for, for a good hour. And we, we were celebrating on the pitch. You know, I was jumping up and down because, um, not because it was at Tottenham, but it's, it's, you know, you got a little bit of that. But I, w I was respectful when I came out afterwards. But I was just over the moon that we were won the championship and uh, won the Premiership, and I was just saying, wow, it's, uh, this is what this is what it's all about, you know, because it was such a pressure game, uh, uh, and to win it there uh, for the for the Arsenal fans, it, it, it's a dream. And it was, it was great to see, but we still had, you know, it was, it was a weird situation because we wanted to go out and celebrate. We've done our bit now, we've won the league. We want to just go out and have a party for two weeks, but it was one of, we had to keep our focus because the, the, obviously the unbeaten season was still available. And that was the hardest four games we had to play because just to keep yourself focused, um, you know, we knew we was going to try and create a history we could by going unbeaten. Um, so that was a really tough period. Fittingly, the goals on the final day of the season against already relegated Leicester City were provided by Henri, who scored his 30th of the campaign from the penalty spot, and the captain Patrick Vieira. They capped one of the most remarkable achievements in football history. I believe forever these boys will be remembered. Uh, when you take a little bit of distance, historical distance, it looks to be a huge achievement. It was a big pleasure for me to be the captain of these players. We know how good we are as a team, and we just have to perform to show to everybody how strong we are. And of course, when you win games, that makes it easy, you know? To be honest, I think everyone will always remember this, this Arsenal side because of the way we were playing as well. But I don't think they would have remembered it that much if we didn't win anything. Arsenal's unbeaten league run lasted 49 games and into the following season before it was ended at Old Trafford. They would gain revenge in the cup final, giving Wenger the fourth FA Cup win of his reign to go with three league titles. For many, though, 
His prime legacy will be the memories of this extraordinary season. <laughs>